I think both the neocons and the Christian right have been remarkably tolerant of uh, the Bush family ties with the Saudis, and perhaps it is just a, an oversight in their, uh, uh, on their part. Obviously, America needs oil. We're addicted to oil. We have 210 million cars and, and light trucks on the road. Uh, and we're, we're very, very dependent on the Middle East for oil. And, and I, I think there's been this, uh, perhaps, conveniently, these theology, the theology and the policies seem to jibe with America's uh, geostrategic needs, the need for, for strategic resources such as oil. And there is no real democracy in Saudi Arabia. There have been baby steps towards it. And, and, and I think what they are getting at really is not so much looking uh, for democratization as for pro-West governments. Uh, Saudi Arabia is still a, a brutal theocratic monarchy, but they happen to be pro-West in terms of their oil policies right now. Uh, whether that will last forever ever is another question. And if there were democracy in Saudi Arabia right now, uh, chances are they'd vote for someone who is much less pro-West and much closer to the, the policies of Osama bin Laden. In fact, I have to wonder if, if this great Saudi-Bush relationship, the Saudi-American relationship, is finally coming to an end. Uh, you see, for example, China is on the ascendancy. Their oil imports are now uh, going through the roof, and they're starting to develop more and more uh, stronger and stronger relationships with Saudi Arabia and other uh, oil importing nations. In addition, uh, e even though King Fahd just died, uh, and, and you've had one succession, that's not the real cataclysmic succession uh, that, that I think will inevitably come in Saudi Arabia. There will be a generational change soon enough. Uh, uh, King Abdullah now is, is roughly 80 years old. You have a leadership of octogenarians, and, and I think that is going to uh, obviously come to a pass within a few years. And, and Saudi Arabia will f be facing enormous internal problems. They're, they're, uh, and, and again, as I said, you will have China, and w whether or not they will, they may tilt towards China as the, in, in terms of having the kind of favored relationship that they've had with the United States. You know, the Saudi-Bush relationship is one of the great historic relationships, I, I, I think, in world history in many ways. I think there's, there's probably no other world leaders have been as close to the White House as the Saudis have. Prince Bandar was a close, close personal friend of Bush Sr. Uh, I traced a total of $1.4 billion in contracts and investments going from the Saudi royal family and their allies into companies close to the Bushes. And we watched their policies on a geopolitical level, uh, start, starting with the, the war in Afghanistan uh, in 1979-1980, uh, lead to the end of the Soviet empire in many ways, but it w also was a funding of uh, Islamist extremism that, uh, to which both the Saudis and the U.S. turned a blind eye, and that grew eventually into Osama bin Laden. The Saudis have never really cracked down on Islamist extremism. They've, they've taken some genuine steps in recent years, uh, uh, but not even 9-11 really triggered that. It was really more when uh, al-Qaeda bombed Riyadh in May of 2003 that they began to see these attacks on their own turf, and that's when they started to, to crack down. Even now, however, uh, they managed to turn, to blind, turn a blind eye to some extent. This is really more through sins of omission. That is, uh, Wahhabi Islam is the state religion. It, it is a theocratic monarchy. And Wahhabi Islam is an extremist, puritanical religion. It has fostered uh, Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda in many ways, uh, in its most extreme form. And the, the Saudis find it very hard to crack down on it because they are the defenders of Wahhabi Islam. It is part of their government. Militant clergy uh, are part of the Saudi uh, government. So even though they take some steps, there's this constant push and pull within Saudi Arabia.